Welcome, everybody. It is Sunday, August 7th, 2022, and this is the Morgellons Call of the Week. I'm Robin uh, from Western Mass, the co-host, and I'm thrilled to be here. And uh, I'm honored to be part of this call and to work with Richard Kuhn, the author of How to Get Your Life Back from Morgellons and Other Skin Parasites. So, um, Richard never stops researching. He fairly recently released the 11th edition of his book, and he discovered the King Diet, uh, which helps uh, people recover from parasites. Nothing works without the diet kicking in. It's amazing. And... um, and he's there in the trenches. He's been through it, and he never stops researching. He's there for us. He's here every Sunday. He answers emails. He takes questions on every Sunday call. So, you know, he's he's a foremost authority on Morgellons and other skin parasites. He understands things that the doctors don't understand yet because they just don't get it. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Richard Kuhns, author of How to Get Your Life Back from Morgellons and Other Skin Parasites. Thank you, Robin. Wonderful to be here. Uh, Let me start with the uh, technical stuff, the FDA disclosures, so we never get in trouble, hopefully, with the uh, federal government. The FDA requires that I inform everybody here that before you start the King Diet, or accept any of our recommendations that you discuss them thoroughly with your doctor to make sure they don't interfere with any health problems you're presently experiencing. And today's topic, as uh, uh, Chris had noted earlier uh, in in, uh, his uh, comments, is about cleaning your mouth. And it's a very uh, important topic, probably one of the most important that we can talk about because Morgellon seems to... uh, Oh, have a way of really turning people's mouths upside down with uh, all kind, you know, gum disease, loss of teeth, and so forth. Well, the AMA also um, requires that we tell you that we are not trained physicians. Therefore, we do not diagnose you. Legally, we do not diagnose you, treat you. We don't cure. We don't have a cure. We don't mitigate the disease. Uh, What we are allowed to do is to educate you how to utilize the King Diet. Now, the King Diet, as Robin mentioned, is the crux of this program. It's important that the first thing you do is work on making that diet work. We know that... For some people, it's not easy. Robin will share you her personal experience. It took a month for her to get the diet to work. She attended this program, utilized this program as a support, and didn't give up, and the result was worth it. So I have, I just basically need to say that until you can make the diet work, I don't know how to be of support or value, all right? That's number one. Sure, our products in the store can help relieve symptoms to some degree or whatever, but once you make the diet work, then our products kick in and it's amazing. You do not have to buy any of our products. In fact, I got my life back the first time around before I even knew about these products, okay? So uh, I used hot scalding baths and discovered the diet, and that's how I got my life back. So now the topic today is about cleaning your mouth. And Chris had mentioned earlier what we're going to talk about you know, bacteria. You know, we usually think of bacteria as only being bad, but actually there are healthy bacteria and there are unhealthy bacteria. And when we 
bring in, well, you don't even have to bring in Morgellons disease to have your mouth totally populated with unhealthy bacteria that can uh, contribute to the worst breath you could ever imagine smelling, uh, rot, rotted teeth, periodontal disease. Uh, I mean, you don't have to have Morgellons, but it seems that along comes Morgellons and this can be more of an issue for many, many people. We have several things uh, in the store that we recommend that uh, uh, and people have used for years to uh, help with their mouth health. Uh, what's the first one there, Robin? The um, mouthwash body wipes. Yeah, the mouthwash. Have you used it? Yes, I love the mouthwash. And I love the fact that after you swish it around in your mouth, you can slowly swallow it, and it helps clean your insides as well. Yes, it's, it's a dual cool. purpose. It, it helps get rid of that bad bacteria. And if you know how to draw it up into uh, the nasal cavities, you can do that and, and uh, uh, get a good clean. I, I mean, I've used it on occasion when I come down with a sore throat. So you just take some of that mouthwash and just let it sit in the back of my throat for as long as it can. And it it, it basically kind of cleans out the uh, the bad organisms that uh, contribute to uh, sore throat. So it, it's a, a, a phenomenal. What's next? Um, I don't know. Feeding your I, gums. I, I, I'm sorry, what? Feeding your gums glutathione. Right, right. Glutathione is a... Uh, a, a major, major uh, substance that, that contributes to healing and uh, uh, re reducing uh, uh, inflammation. And so in our store, we have two forms of glutathione. Well, actually, the one is called Max-1. It's a capsule. It is not glutathione, but it... it uh, uh, is bonded D ribose with L cysteine and it gets through your uh, stomach into the cells to create glutathione. But that's not uh, going to give us the most results here. We have another one called nano glutathione and it, uh, it's a liquid and a dropper bottle and you put that under your tongue for, for 90 seconds to absorb. But if we're dealing with a gum, well, you would want to get it all around your gums. So you don't just necessarily hold it because it is glutathione. So you don't want to hold it under your tongue. You want to get it and have all your gums exposed to it. And you're, uh, so you do that for 90 seconds or longer. And if you're on stage two or higher, you're, you're safe to swallow it. It has uh, orange oil in it. And if you're in Starting with stage one, I recommend then spitting it out because I'm not 100% certain that orange oil is going to be great for uh, uh, being in stage right. one of the diet. So uh, that would be uh, uh, something really important to do in, in terms of uh, uh, promoting gum health. Then there's a, another a vitamin that we have in the store also. It's called vitamin triple K. Now, triple K is a relatively uh, newly discovered vitamin. And I learned of its importance uh, through one of these online seminars where they have like uh, 10 or 15 uh, experts in the dental field talking about um, dental health. And triple K uh could be very important to uh add to your your regime the potential benefits of uh, uh reducing dental caries and uh dental health the the problems with the mouth as i mentioned are the unhealthy bacteria that this unhealthy bacteria contributes to gingivitis. How many billion, uh, uh, Chris, how many billion uh, uh, 
bacteria do we generally have in our mouth, did you say? One billion. One billion. One billion bacteria. Yes. And they, do you know how many strains there are? Several thousand, right? Yeah, yeah, at least several Se thousand. Several thousand strains of these different bacteria in our mouths. <clears throat> and you have good actors and you have bad actors. And I don't know, do, do you know what uh, gets a person in a position where, where they end up uh, uh, having more population of bad bacteria than good bacteria? Do, do you know how that gets started? Is it from the food they eat or, or their habits? or, or what, what, what do you think upsets the, uh, the biome in the mouth? What do you think does that, Chris? The biome actually gets upset is because of two reasons. The saliva has the pH and also has a lot of antibiotics and antiseptic and astringent quality. So if you, you if you are not producing enough of saliva, and then what happens is this bacteria starts growing, and if you are not keeping it healthy in between the two, uh, the teeth, uh, we have to do the flossing and stuff like that. So the saliva is actually a, 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 a protectant, and not only it's a digestive enzymes in it, but also it's a first defense is to make sure that these bacteria don't overgrow. Um, and you, you, made a, you made a good point there, flossing and brushing your teeth, uh, because as the food you uh, you eat, uh, the, the saliva helps break it down, but if you leave it in your teeth and are brushing and it's uh, between your teeth, then the bacteria starts growing. And, and becomes a problem is, is uh, one of the things. So it can be from our early habits that uh, as children that we don't brush our teeth enough and, and don't take care of our mouths enough uh, that contribute to the upset of, of the bacteria. So it's important to look at what you can do. The first thing that I looked at, of course, if you go on the internet, you find all kinds of things. And I was having a, a problem with some gingivitis uh, a few years ago, and I, I found this product called Steel Bite Pro. And of course, as you listen to their product, uh, their information, it all sounds sense, like it makes sense. But the the thing, it's an herbal, which is good. It's herbal. Uh, the only problem is, and I could. You know, now that I think about it, it doesn't quite make sense. You swallow this capsule, so it goes into the tummy, and then somehow has to get to your mouth. Well, the only good thing I found out about it is that it's got berberine in it, and berberine is an herb that helps balance blood sugar, which was I was getting kind of borderline then there uh, with my blood sugar because I had gotten addicted to uh, uh, a soda. Uh, what Mountain Dew soda? Every time I went to Costco, I we'd get Mountain Dew soda. I'm I'm on stage three. I can eat and drink anything I want. There's no problem, and it became a problem. So I uh, ended the Mountain Dew and ended up with a, a little blood sugar issue, which this helped dramatically with the berberine. So uh, Barbara, our herbalist, and I were discussing and formulating a mouth repair herbal supplement, thinking in terms, hoping that this, this would help the situation with uh, my mouth, but it didn't. Uh, but the berberine is, is very important, and we may be uh, uh, taking the berberine and, and some other uh, herbs and putting together a blood sugar balance herbal uh, formula uh, from that experience. But more recently, and I'm not promoting this. I'm, I'm only informing you. There is, I learned of this product here. It's called ProDentum. And in many respects, it makes a lot more sense to me than Steel by Pro. Uh, now, <clears throat> ProDentum is a little, it's not really a capsule. It's a, a little tablet that you dissolve in your mouth after you brush your teeth or use the mouthwash uh, and you clean your teeth. And it's populated with millions and millions of healthy bacteria to repopulate. And of course, they say, and I'm gonna find out, they say that uh, 
uh, this will uh, clean out all, help get rid of all the bad bacteria. Now, how I will know is, is because uh, I've got a lot of old fillings that, uh, according to my dental hygienist, are going to be needing to be replaced because of the bacteria is beginning to get around uh, in between the fillings and the tooth. And so according to the claims these people make, this will clean out that bad bacteria and I should see a difference in, in a few months. But I'm not promoting it. However, I did uh, list the link to it in the update that went out. And if you want to take it upon yourself to look, it into, look into it and check it out, that's great. If we uh, find that it's something that's uh, beneficial and really does work, then, of course, we can add it into our store. The other thing, too, is uh, in the initial uh, comments that uh, Chris was making that were not recorded, he was talking about gut biome. And we have a product in the store to help replenish the gut biome, which is called ION. It's a, a collection of mi a soil minerals specific for uh, improving gut biome. This, again, because when you swallow, these good bacteria are going to be uh, carried into uh, the gut will also uh, contribute to improving gut biome if, if we look at it that way. So that's an, another thing, and it, it could be very important in the long run. So moving on here, what else do we have? Well, for years I wanted to do a toothpaste. But I was always thinking in terms of the toothpaste had to go into a tube like you do get toothpaste in. And I had difficulty finding how where I could get a supply of tubes and how to get them uh, labeled uh, so that uh, they would look commercial. And then I suddenly realized, well, you don't have to put the stuff in a tube. You can put it in a jar. So... A couple of years ago, we came out, and the reason being is that, okay, the commercial toothpaste that you buy, whether it be Crest or Colgate or Ipana or whatever the heck it is, if you check the ingredients, you're going to find it's got fluoride in it. All right, fluoride. And in the update that went out this morning, there's a link to a blog post that was published about two years ago about fluoride. There are basically nine reasons, and all of them very important, that you want to get rid of fluoride. Fluoride, in combination with aluminum that we get from antiperspirants, somehow is it increases the ability, the fluoride increases the ability for the brain to uh, uh, to receive this aluminum. So they, they work synergistically together for our demise in terms of dementia and all the other things uh, that come along with uh, Alzheimer's disease. So that's just one reason to get rid of fluoride. Now, I don't care how you get rid of it. I, for years, just used baking soda. Dip my, you know, wet my brush, dip it in a, a box of Arm & Hammer, and brush my teeth. That was great. It, you, you'll be amazed. If you haven't ever done this, you'll be amazed how sweet water tastes after you brush your teeth with baking soda. And uh, uh, so do, do it that way. Go to a health food store or online and find a toothpaste that has no fluoride or and none of the other additives. So you, you have to be cognizant of what's in the diet and the additives and check out all the ingredients uh, to make sure. Some people brush their teeth with our mouthwash. Robin, have you ever brushed your teeth with a mouthwash? Yes, I have. Yeah. You don't need, you don't need uh, toothpaste at all. You can brush, brush your teeth with mouthwash. And by the way, our, our uh, 
our long-standing mouthwash to flavor with cinnamon peppermint. Uh, we ex came out with uh, two more flavors. We'll see if people like them. Uh, clove butt oil. Clove butt oil, many people uh, love uh, for uh, uh, the mouth as well. So we have now a clove bud, and we also came out with a lemon oil. We're looking a little into the future, at least I am, and coming out with the Morgellons cocktail mouthwash, which will cons which will contain uh, five of the different essential oils that are in Morgellons cocktail. So that that's coming up uh, in the future. So and then of course we have our our own uh, mouthwash. I mean our own toothpaste. It comes in a jar. Uh, if, you, if you get it, just notice there's a, a, a little rubber band ar around the lid because with that, that rubber band serves as like, somewhat like a gasket. Without that rubber band, if you, if you take it out and you tighten the jar lid, you won't get it undone without a pliers, uh, you know, because it, I don't know why, but it tightens so hard that you can't get uh, it unscrewed. So keep that little rubber band in there. It, it has a function. So our toothpaste has uh, the cinnamon, the peppermint, and the clove uh, bud oils in it, along with uh, baking soda and some uh, eggshells to uh, remineralize remineral your teeth. So it, it, I feel, is an excellent uh, toothpaste. And likewise, uh, after you use it, water tastes sweet. It, it really does. So what else do we do? We uh, toothpaste, mouthwash. Well, uh, as we talked about a little bit earlier uh, with Chris, we talked about flossing your teeth. Flossing your teeth daily is important to get. You see, this is where the bad bacteria comes from. The food gets trapped between your teeth, and if it stays there, uh, it contributes to. I mean, if you have food that's trapped between your teeth for a few days and it's rotted, it's, I mean, it's really, I wonder how some dental hygienists can take it because not everybody, I'm sure, brush their teeth and some people go to get their teeth cleaned and they get that food caught between their teeth and it's rotten. It contributes to bad breath and all these problems with the, uh, the bad bacteria. So you want to floss your teeth every day you want to also, after you eat, use a toothpick or some kind of pick and pick stuff out from between your teeth so it doesn't stay there and begin to te deteriorate. And uh, let's see, did we miss anything? Well, the water pick. The water pick is important also. And in my water pick, I use distilled water and I drink that water and infuse it with uh, uh, ionic minerals so that all the minerals are there. And I use that water in my uh, tooth, in my uh, water pick and get in between the teeth and anything the toothbrush may have missed. And of course, uh, brushing your teeth is, you know, we talked about that a moment ago. So that's uh, basically uh, a good round uh, overall thing to do in taking care of your teeth. So it's good to have your list, make sure you're doing it all on a daily basis, and you should start noticing that uh, your uh, gum health and mouth uh, uh, start feeling better. Okay, uh, Robin, you have anything to add to that? Um, one thing, I, I think when you're brushing your teeth, I think uh, the electric toothbrushes, where you, you spend like, uh, I don't know, 10 seconds on each tooth, and you're not scrubbing, so you're not, a, you're not hurting the gums. I think that that's a way better way to brush your teeth. And you can yeah, still like, use baking use soda or whatever. Your, huh? Yeah, a lot of people use electric to uh, toothbrushes. Uh, my dental hygienist in, uh, instructs me to kind of gently use a brush to massage the gums. And uh, so, somehow massaging your gums is, is also important uh, when you're right. brushing your teeth. Right. That's a good point. Mary, you have anything to add? Uh, the only thing I would say is that um, 
I use every once in a while, I'll swish my mouth with some peroxide to just try and kill some germs because um, I'm, I'm allergic to the, the mouthwash. Um, but I, I do want to try, I do want to try the clove, but I think that'll be really good. Yeah, the peroxide is also great. Uh, I didn't uh, think of that, but it, it's also good to uh, clean your mouth with the peroxide as well. And, of course, spit it out. You're using the 3% peroxide. Uh, Chris, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, Richard, uh, one thing about the bad breath you were talking about is I learned when I was working with the oral surgeon is the bad breath is very localized. That means it's actually coming from your mouth, and it is usually because you are not maintaining the hygiene. But the bad breath that is coming from internal, from your inside the throat, your uh, gut system, is called helitosis, and that is actually the origin of it is guts and the stomach, because that means if you have helitosis, not bad breath. Bad breath should go away when you brush. You have a bad breath early in the morning, it is understandable because there was no saliva production during the night when you sleep. But if you have throughout the day, if you have halitosis and the sulfur dioxide compounds are forming in your tongue and sometimes there is a white coating, these are all symptoms of a chronic problem called halitosis. Bad breath is localized and it can be fixed by washing and rinsing and brushing your teeth. That's an important distinction, uh, and, and thank you for sharing that. It's an important distinction. Uh, so there, so okay. Well, that wraps up this uh, segment then.